Welcome to this episode of the Smarter Business Podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about all things video uh, and how they relate to your business. Today, we're talking to Tyler Lassard, who is the VP of Marketing at Vidyard and also the co-author of The Visual Sale. Uh, Tyler, it's great to have you. Hey, thanks so much. It's a real pleasure to be here. And as you know, uh, I've been passionate about this world of video and business for quite a few years now. So it's, uh, it's absolutely a pleasure to be here to, to share some of the things I've learned and what we're expecting as we head into 2021. Yeah, it's an exciting time for people in video, right? Yeah. Uh, as long as you're able to adapt a little to all the craziness that's going on right now. Yeah. So first thing I want you to do, Tyler, is just give us an intro. I get introed your title, but tell us a little bit about, yeah. you know, your position, Vidyard, um, you know, yeah. kind of what goes on there and what you, you all do. Yeah, happy to. So, uh, so as mentioned, I'm VP Marketing here at Vidyard, and we are a video technology company. We've been around for just over 10 years, and there's uh, effectively two parts to, to what we do. We are a full video hosting, management, publishing, and analytics platform for businesses. Uh, so businesses will use us to publish videos on their websites, on their various digital properties, in their marketing campaigns. Uh, and we provide the ability to customize the video playback experience through our own player, uh, create interactive videos uh, to track rich engagement data on the back end on who's watching which content, and to integrate that back into your marketing and sales tools. And, and that's been a big focus for us is helping businesses get a better degree of knowledge and understanding of who's actually engaging with my videos, because more and more they're becoming a you know, really material part of both the marketing and sales process. Um, so that's one half of our business. And the other half is uh, we have a tool that makes it really easy for any sales rep, customer service rep, or others to record and send custom video messages uh, externally to prospects or customers or even internally within their teams uh, through a simple Chrome extension uh, that not only allows you to record and send videos, but will also alert you when somebody watches and allow you to upload and send other videos directly via email, social, and other channels. So it's been a lot of fun bringing all those things together and now working with marketing, sales, and, and frankly, every team within a business on how they're expanding and, and evolving their use of video. Yeah, it's, and it is a great suite of products. We are uh, we have a subscription uh, through VidWeon, the creator network, and uh, have actually demoed uh, through one of uh, the types of meetings, which we'll get to this later, but you're going to come present to one of our meetings. One of the meetings was around how to do screen capture yeah. style videos with your tool. So it's been, it's, it's a great piece of tech. Anyone should check it out, especially, you know, the plugin is free at the most basic level. So you got to yeah. give it a shot, right? Um, and uh, Vidyard based in Kitchener, right? That's so. right. Yes, we are uh, in Canada. We're just outside of Toronto. Uh, we were, were founded here, as I said, about 10 years ago and have grown the company uh, here in our, in our headquarters. Uh, we're obviously now a distributed team for the most part, but uh, it's, it's been great growing this, uh, this organization here in Canada, an amazing pool of, of talent and, and particularly engineers. And we've, you know, we've just really focused on, on being innovative uh, and, you know, adapting quickly and, building tech and tools that, that people can use really easily uh, to, to kind of bring video to everybody, which is, which is a big part of that mission is ensuring whether you're a producer or a marketing team or an individual sales rep, a leader, a, a finance professional. Um, yeah, we're kind of on that mission to say, hey, everybody needs to be able to create and share videos of various formats and varying degrees of production uh, value. And because that's where the world is heading. So it's been, uh, yeah, it's been really fun to grow the business here. That's excellent. Yeah. And we're, we're located just over the border in Buffalo. So yeah, yep. you're just up the road, but we're not allowed to kind of see each other at this point. <laughs> in history, no, but so. I'm, I'm sure we both have the same snow right now, which is, right. you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it happens this time of year. I'm going to ask you a little bit of a harder question. If you had to Please. boil it down to one sentence, what would you say it is that Vidyard does? Oh, Neil, you're putting me on this. That's a tough know. one. You know, that's we do your, so many your, great things. It's it's not just your elevator pitch. It's just, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll use our, uh, you know, our mission statement, which is sure. to, you know, help businesses and organizations succeed and grow through the use of video. 
Um, and, you know, it, it really does come back to that of, of thinking about all these ways in which we can tap into the power of video um, in lots of different uh, parts of our business to, to grow and, and achieve our results. So that's kind of what gets us out of the bed every morning. That's awesome. Yeah, that works really well. Um, all right. So let's talk a little bit. Um, we're on two different sides of the border when it comes to kind of the business and COVID uh, side of things. But yep. part of we made a big pivot to this creator network uh, because of COVID and how it's affected the way that uh, right. you know, businesses operate. So I would say video is more important than ever, especially for the small businesses that, you know, maybe got away with uh, networking events and, you know, yeah. handshakes and so on uh, to kind of get deals done. What do you think has changed, I guess, the most yeah. in terms of video with business? Yeah, it's, you know, it's been really interesting the last number of years. And then, of course, this past, you know, nine to 10 months as, uh, as COVID's been in our lives. Um, you know, over in a more macro sense, what we've been seeing over the last number of years is this evolution of the use of video in businesses, not just for, you know, um, promotional activities or advertising or the big hero video on your homepage, uh, which, you know, a lot of companies do and are great and are things that, that we should be thinking about. But traditionally, it was very much that notion of, hey, we'd produce, you know, three videos a year and we'd have a budget of this and an agency would do them for us. And, and that was it, right? Um, whereas, you know, fast forward to today and, you know, video has become both such an accessible medium for businesses, um, you know, a much more inexpensive medium to, to use to create, even when working through, through partners and, and freelancers. And then it's also become an expected medium for our audiences, right? People are just, you know, they're, they're in a world now where they expect to be able to come to your website and learn about a topic, not just through a written blog post, but through a video. They want to be able to connect with you through things like podcasts, right? So it's very much this multimedia world. And more and more of the content I'm seeing businesses invest in are educational videos, are series-based videos, are, you know, question and answer style videos, things that aren't necessarily meant for, you know, millions of viewers and advertisements and pre-rolls, but are things that come back to our core content needs and saying, we need to, you know, we need to help somebody learn about this topic. We need to show them what it is that we do and we can't have, you know, force them to get on a call with a salesperson every time they just want to learn about us. So that's what I've really started to see at a macro level. And, and since COVID has happened, it's also pushed it to be more and more authentic style content, if you will, more conversational style videos, having less of a marketing and sales feel to it and more like real people having real conversations, authentically explaining problems genuinely showing you things um, and, and being more helpful and human than, you know, trying to be overly produced and uh, promotional, if you will. And I think that's going to continue to happen in business. And, you know, we're going to be now focused on making videos every week at a low cost for each video, as opposed to three videos a year that each cost us $50,000. Right, right. Yeah, that's it. I had a, on the sales call just yesterday, I was talking to somebody like now is the time when you can get away with the, not get away with it, but it's more accepted. It's more expected to uh, have that, that kind of more raw type of video. Right? Absolutely. Like, like I said to you beforehand, I thought a kid would come down the stairs. My, my <laughs> wife just walked through and a cat and, you know, but when you look at it and the national newscaster is, yep. you know, broadcasting out of their home office or their kitchen or something. And, you know, it, it just brings a whole new level of like, well, this is, it's going to be a little more real. Right. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. So not a bad thing. Get to get a little glimpse. Into no, it, it's not. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's super interesting, right? Because as you know, creators, uh, it, you know, it poses all these new opportunities for how we yep. think about content, how we create it, um, you know, as budget holders, you know, we feel like, great, we can create content now at, uh, you know, potentially don't need the same level of budget, but we still get the same output. Um, but what we also need to be thinking about is, you know, how and, you know, we can leverage, in many cases, even our own people, like even if we're, you know, in some cases, we can create videos ourselves within our business with our own employees. In other cases, maybe we are working with production partners, freelancers, but in many cases, you can still have your own employees be featured in that content and you're leveraging somebody else's expertise 
to produce it, to shoot it, to edit it, right? But you don't always need actors, um, you know, to be in your videos. Often they can be your own employees. And often that goes a really long way to, uh, you know, to again, being really genuine and authentic. And I think creating content that people are really resonating with. Yeah. Yeah. Authenticity, always the key. That's, uh, that's something we preach in the creator network. Yeah. And I've always preached to my clients. Um, I would much rather have the real customer with the unpolished delivery and a testimonial 100%. than some, you know, spokesperson who's trying to do the perfectly crafted message. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sick of hearing 300% increase in this. It's like, no, no yeah, okay, right, yeah, right. all right, all right. But I want to hear their story. Like, what real problems did they really have? And like, how did they solve those like really tactical issues that I'm facing every day, right? That's the stuff that gets me going as a, as a potential buyer. So let's tell those stories, you know, right. that are, are really about what they did and not the like, we will transform your business. <laughs> right, right, right. Much more relatable. Absolutely. Well, and, uh, you know, speaking, I guess, of the, uh, the messaging and so on, yeah. uh, some of what, what I saw from you recently, and I know is your kind of main space that you operate in, is sales with video. Yeah. Uh, I saw a pretty good one that you put out there with people kind of reading the bad sales nice. messages recently, <laughs> which is an entertaining piece if anybody yeah. wants to go check it out. But sales with video. Um, that's part of the reason that I'm having you on for December, because in the creator network, uh, we're focusing on sales with video for awesome. the month of December with all our programming. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's talk about it. Like what are best practices? Is it an effective tool? What are your, what are your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, that's the biggest shift that we've probably seen this year. I mentioned there's been, you know, this, this gravitation towards more conversational, personal style content. And in parallel, we've seen this just explosive growth of the use of video in sales teams, um, you know, obviously, you know, partly driven by the fact that they are all now being pushed into being inside sellers, many of whom have traditionally been more out there in the field, you know, visiting customers in person. So a lot of them shifted to video calls and tools like Zoom and others to do that. But then as part of that, you know, sellers are now getting pretty adept at, you know, cre you know, recording video, if you will, you know, they're figuring out having a decent camera, having a decent mic, having decent uh, lighting, because they need to do that to come across professional and engaging with their customers in video calls. But then as an outshoot, now they're starting to realize how easy it can be to also record and send their own custom videos, um, whether it be when they're doing their prospecting into a new account, and instead of just sending, you know, the same old text-based email, they can hit record, record a video of them delivering their message and send that off via an email or a social message and get their face in front of that person even before they've ever had a chance to meet. And, you know, this has just started to become a reality in the last few years as tools like Vidyard and others have made it really simple and accessible for sellers. But again, I think there's been this real catalyst of with COVID, they're now getting a lot more comfortable being on camera. And many people are now also working at home, which makes it much less awkward to record a video than when you're sitting in a, you know, a bullpen in the office with people sitting three feet away from you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm really encouraging sellers to think about that and go, you know what, embrace working out of working out of your home, you know, make phone and video your, your new best friends again, because you can, you know, you're, you can put your personality out there, you can record, you can send this great stuff um, and, and really get behind it. So. We're really seeing that uh, catching momentum now, as well as sales using other styles of pre-produced videos, which, which we can talk about as well, um, because I think all of that is really important now as sellers adapt to this new world and you know, need to create that personal connection, even when they're remote. Yeah, yeah. Well, and another piece of that, that easy video recording um, that, uh, that, that I've seen a lot, I actually saw it from some of your sales team when we yeah. were, you know, uh, uh, months ago when we got set up with uh, your software but the the animated gif right with the yeah. uh, you know holding your name and like all that kind of stuff is all like really nice personal touches that i think helps cut through that normal like you know yeah. the number of emails that everyone in business gets um yeah that yeah. are, are disingenuously uh <laughs> you know customized right that 
that is, that's another level of customization and another level of personalization. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because as you think about how sellers can start to use, you know, custom videos in their sales process, um, you know, we, we as creators, we understand a lot of these sort of, you know, superpower traits of video that make it, you know, really exceptional, right? And what we're now seeing is sellers starting to learn, oh yeah, how can I use it at different points in my sales process to, you know, overcome different challenges or, or achieve some results by kind of tapping into those, those superpowers of video. And if you, you know, you, what you just talked about there is using it as part of, of cold prospecting when you're out there trying to get somebody's attention, right? Because that's the hardest thing as a seller is when you're prospecting, you just, you, you've got to get that first response, right? And in that case, sending an email with a, with a video in it, that's got an animated thumbnail image. So they see you, they might see something that's personalized to them. You might be holding up their name written on a whiteboard. You might be recording a screen share with your face on it as well, but maybe you're on their website or something like that. And that becomes this pattern disrupt. First of all, they're like, wait a minute, a video? Well, I'm not used to that. Um, it, it becomes much more personal, right? You all of a sudden go, oh, I can see that person's face. I've got an association. And, um, and it can help you break through that noise. So in prospecting, it helps you stand out, be more visual and connect with them early on. As you move through the sales process though, there's other ways in which video becomes your best friend as a seller. Because as we both know, Neil, video is the best way to educate people because you can show as well as just tell, right? And you know, as a salesperson, when you're trying to explain what it is that you do, or you're trying to answer a question that they've, they've sent over, or you're trying to, you know, again, demonstrate or show here's how our product or service works, right? It's so much easier to do that visually and to do a screen share recording or to, you know, hold something up visually or to even just use your body language to help explain it. And, you know, it has such, such power in helping people to comprehend ideas because you can mix visuals with your voice and so on. And that's why we as marketers make explainer videos and recorded demos but we're now at a point where salespeople can hit record on their desktop again using a tool like Vidyard and they can record a webcam video, you know, explaining something. They can record a screen share showing something on the screen. They can pull up a presentation and, and talk through a few things. All of those things are now possible. They can send those videos over easily and let somebody watch it on their own time and not always be dependent on setting up a Zoom call or something like that. And it's, it's genuinely changing the way people sell. So that's why I get so excited about this. Yeah, and that, that is a great, great point that the, the kind of flexibility of time that it creates because, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if any, it probably came through my, my daughter in the background <laughs> screaming a little <laughs> with the babysitter, like kids being, you know, kind of at home, uh, home offices, like everything that's going on yeah. now, uh, time is more kind of precious and maybe uh, more fluid than ever. So it's, it's giving that other step can be really, really helpful. Yeah, so uh, you, you, you co-authored a book on the subject, right? Do you want to kind of tell us what, what's involved with the book, what's included and yeah, uh, yeah the visual sale? Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about this. Uh, yeah, the book is called The Visual Sale. For those of you watching the video, I'm holding it up now. For those of you listening, just imagine the most beautiful book you've ever seen <laughs> called The Visual Sale. Um, and the subtitle is How to Use Video to Explode Sales, Drive Marketing, and Grow Your Business in a Virtual World. And uh, this is something, yes, I've co-authored with Marcus Sheridan, who's a phenomenal guy. And we came together with our joint experience in using video across both marketing and sales in modern businesses. And we both have backgrounds in content marketing, inbound marketing, sales strategy. And this book is very much a, a practical hands-on guide to how to use video across your sales programs and your marketing programs to you know, really embrace this new digital world, to help your sellers uh, stand out to better communicate your ideas. And of course, as marketers, as ways to really enrich the different programs and channels you're using today. Um, so we really go you know, deep into tons of examples, tons of best practices, checklists, things like that, um, about you know, how to use it at all these different points based on all these experiences we've seen, all the best practices we've gleaned from the clients that we work with. 
um, and sort of all the latest uh, trends and, and research out there. So really excited about it. Very timely, of course, with uh, with everything happening right now. Um, and yeah, you can you can get it on Amazon and, and other online bookstores. It's very exciting. That was my next question. Yeah, best place to get it. Would you recommend Amazon or? Yeah, head on to Amazon. Just search for the visual sale and uh, you should find it by Marcus Sheridan and Tyler Lassard. Um, and uh, as well, you can just go straight to thevisualsale.com and uh, we've got a great site for the book. That'll explain more about what's in there, what to expect. Uh, lots of other related resources as well on the visual sale page where you can download additional worksheets, templates. There's uh, you know lots of related articles, videos uh, about the topic as well. So you can check it out there too. That is excellent. And yeah. yes, timely. Like that when 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 you brought that up as a potential thing to kind of tie into what we're doing this month, like it could not be more perfect for for yeah. our setup with the creator network. So that's great. All right, I am going to bring you to, we've got one common thread that we run through all these Smarter Business podcast episodes, yeah. right? And it's all about, uh, this podcast is really about making your business smarter through video, but uh, I guess what is one thing that you've done to make your business or a client's business smarter? And if it's video or not video, you know, that's, that, that's up to you, <laughs> whatever is smartest. <laughs> so. Well, I think, uh, you know, one of the things we've really focused on and, and me as a, you know, as a marketing leader, you know, I think a lot about and, and, and we think about it with our clients as well is how do we, how do we use as, as much data, insights, information as possible to, you know, learn about, of course, what's working in what we're doing, where we're spending our dollars and cents. Uh, on different programs and campaigns, but also, um, you know, what is, you know, what can help us understand which leads or prospects or customers, um, you know, are the right fit, are the most interested, you know, the most qualified. So we've spent, you know, a significant amount of energy over the last number of years, uh, you know, really building the systems behind the scenes in our own infrastructure to be able to track and how are our different content assets performing, how are different videos, how are different guides, how are different blog posts actually not only impacting how many leads we're getting, but how are they helping to influence pipeline and revenue, right? So how many people who watched that video actually converted into a customer? So we get a better sense for how different content types, how different assets are actually influencing the bottom line and not just making our, not just making us feel good because it got 20,000 views, yes. right? Um, <laughs> And, and, and that's also something, you know, just from a video perspective, we work with clients on as well is, you know, our platform helps them track how those videos are performing, but also who's watching which videos and getting that data back into their sales and marketing tools so they can report on that kind of data. Um, so, so those are some of the things that I think a lot about, again, for video, but then for the rest of the campaign and programs that we run, um, you know, not just to pat ourselves on the back and say, yeah, we hit our numbers but more importantly to continuously learn and optimize and know what are we doing that's really influencing sales and revenue and how can we do more of that and uh, and, and you know reduce investments in things that may feel good cuz you know they look great and they get a right. bunch of people engaging but they don't necessarily <laughs> drive through to sales yeah, this comes up a lot, right? Vanity yeah. metrics. That's where everybody goes to start, right? They want all the views and stuff, but like what it comes down to is does it convert, right? You yeah. know, uh, yeah. what, what, where does it end up? So the yeah. analytics part is, is, is something that, that has come yeah. up in this actual smartest thing before, um, yeah. where it's all about, it's all about uh, knowing what's going on there. On yeah. more than a surface level, right? Yeah, but uh, it doesn't surprise me. It's a you know hot topic for a lot of people because yeah. the technology is there to help you do it. So a lot of CEOs have that expectation of okay, right. we should be able to <laughs> to yeah. track this. And and I'll I'll leave you with one you know one additional um, note on that as you think sure. about you know we'll, we'll focus in on video since since that's such an important topic here. When you think about the analytics you're measuring related to video, um, I often think about it as the three R's to make it easy to remember. Um, there's reach, there's resonance, and then there's ROI. And reach is your measure of these things like views, right? Um, but reach is really driven by, frankly, how well you promote the content uh, and largely that, right? And then if there's some virality to it, that's great. So there's, there's reach, which in some cases is important if it's content you're trying to get out in front of a lot of people. Um, the resonance 
is about for those people who do watch it, uh, how long are they staying engaged? And that will tell you, is the content itself really hitting the mark? Because you can get 10,000 views on a video by just making a clickbaity, but if people don't actually watch through, it's not resonating and it's not having the impact. So yep. you wanna look at that engagement data for the videos themselves to know on average, how many people are making it through to the end. And you know, a good benchmark is 60% um, is kind of the general industry uh, standard for what you would expect a decent video to be keeping 60% of people watching all the way to the end. But if you're keeping 70 or 80% of people, that's a high performing video and you're doing something right. So that's resonance. Is it really working? Is the content itself effective? And then ROI is, is are people who are engaging in that content eventually turning into pipeline or revenue for your business? And that's how you can really get down to was the money or time or energy we invested in creating that content or doing video in general, paying off to the business. So reach resonance and ROI um, are the things to be thinking about from my perspective. I love it. Yeah. Three hours, easy to remember. And that is, I mean, that's, that's a great description of kind of, yeah, the, the different levels of, uh, you know, kind of um, how important or, you know, mm-hmm. how they impact your business. So yep. All right. Well, that that ends our kind of scheduled questions. In any interview I do, I like to always put in an open-ended piece there where if anything got knocked loose, if there's anything we left out that you wanted to kind of bring up in this interview, uh, now is your chance, Tyler. Anything? You know, I'll, uh, I'll just end with, uh, you know, some, some advice on using video in sales, since that is a, a hot topic that, that we're all talking about right now. Um, you know, earlier I, I mentioned this notion of how sellers now more, more easier than ever can record and share custom videos and, and use it at different parts throughout their sales process. And, um, you know, I think it's something that all of us just, we need to start trying. If you're not, you know, trying it yet, you're not experimenting with it yet. Um, you know, I, I swear to you that the barrier to entry is zero. Uh, there's tools, as you mentioned earlier, like Vidyard that are free to use. Uh, and you can, you know, go and, and sign up today. And your sellers can start recording and sending videos and, and using it as a way to, to really kickstart that process. And, you know, with our, with our business edition, then you can start also empowering them with all those marketing produced videos for them to use and share as, as well. But I think for a lot of us, it's just being aware that this is an option, um, you know, starting to try it out at different points in our sales process and, and making it a bit more of a habit. Because I think, you know, if you don't start now, you're going to be regretting it, uh, you know, three, yeah. six, 12 months from now. And when this just, you know, this is an expected way and it's not just about live Zoom calls, it's about using, you know, recorded and on-demand content. So, um, you know, give it a whirl. And, uh, and then there's lots of best practices out there as well on, you know, how to make the most of it, how to use it most effectively. We've got lots of those on Vidyard's website and you can find others out there. So just do it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. A lot of good content on the site there that can be used for, for, you know, as a resource. So, well, Tyler, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us or with me and uh, being part of the Smarter Business Podcast. Um, We look forward to, again, having you on December 3rd. We're going to have you present at our open uh, Vidwheel Creator Network Zoom meetup, which is going to be a bunch of folks learning about video for sales. check out Vidyard. We will have uh, links in the description of this podcast. Uh, Check out the visual sale. And if you enjoyed the content that we put together here today, please subscribe to this podcast. Give it a like, give it a share. Uh, If you know anybody who would you think it would be relevant to, send it along. We would love that. And that, that helps support what we're doing here. So again, Tyler, Thank you very much. We normally, we used to do these in studio and there'd be a handshake at the end. So now we just do the, zo- the old Zoom wave, right? Love it. Love it. All well, right. thanks, Neil. That, that was great. Appreciate the opportunity and, and look forward to our next session. Excellent. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you.